Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be making a mixed media steampunk wall hanging using lots of different textures and techniques. So I'm starting off how I usually start off my wall hangs. I've got a real fascination with using um, cardboard boxes and just really distressing them up. And I found the easiest way to do that is to get a wooden skewer and actually put it into the corrugations and pull it up. So you can expose all the different bits and pieces. Now you don't have to do this and in the end um, a lot of this gets covered up with texture pastes and so on but I I've just enjoy doing it and for the little bits that you do see peeking through it just gives a really sort of distressed finish to what you're doing. So I'm just going in with some texture paste. Any texture paste will do this one so happens to have a bit of crackle in it. Um, you can see I'm sort of um, patting my uh, spatula up and down and that again gives lots of rivets and divots into the texture paste. Now for those people who have follow, followed me for a little while now I'm not a very patient person so I'm actually heat setting this which you probably shouldn't do with texture paste not for any particular reason but because this one's got crackle um, medium in it crackle mediums actually work better if you leave them to dry naturally so by heating it up with a heat gun you don't develop that beautiful crackle um, but all I'm doing is sort of heating it up enough that it's sort of developed a skin under it, over the top that I can add some more stuff to it. So this is some glittery paste and then I've got some snow paste which has got some white in it and again this is more to create texture and for those little bits that you do see at the end you've got that little bit of glitter and glimmer in the end paste. Now both of those products are gels um, gel mediums with glitters suspended in them so they're a little bit tacky and you can add extra stuff to them so I decided well I really liked having the little glitter piece in it so I was going to add some gold foil into it as well um, so I'm just continuing to heat this up it, because I put it on a little bit thicker than I usually do um, it does take a little while to to stick um, and I'm just being really random with where I'm putting the, the gold leaf. If you don't have gold leaf, like this is a variegated sort, um, you can use the heat activated foils that you get for mink machines and so on. It does actually stick to the gel medium and just give it a quick blast from your heat gun or a heat tool and then peel it up. The shimmers on it will look slightly plasticky but you'll still get that beautiful foiled effect over the top. And again, for bits like this, you're just looking for the effect. So now I'm heavily covering my area with um, spray papers and I'm going in with the new Dina Wakely gloss sprays, which are like a, a water soluble spray paint and spraying it over the top. They've got this beautiful effect that um, they'll sort of seep into where it's, um, not coated and then if you spray over the top again obviously that coating is now sealed because it's a type of acrylic paint um, and it will layer over the top. If you spray them wet and wet you get these sort of nebulous um, puddles and pools happening. It's just got some really cool effects. To add to the extra texture because you know I've not got enough going on I'm also sprinkling in some of the Ranger Mixed Media powders in the pink and the lime because that sort of matches the colours that I'm using in the background. So the colours I used so far are Ocean, Olive, Magenta and Turquoise I think. Um, I end up putting a few other colours on in the end too. So I'm going in, this is the night and I'm just splotching it on. I just didn't want too much darkness on it, um, just putting on the background. Now. This in itself makes a really cool um, book background that you can add to. Um, you could use it as a wall hanging, you could use it as a mixed media panel on a scrapbook page. There's all sorts of different ways that you could use something like this. It'd be great in the card front as well. To add some extra mic making into the back, I'm using one of the Scrap FX um, stamps. That's um, the little triangle stamp. I'm adding in some more colour so I'm adding in some lime green as well. So it's just lots and lots of layers until you are happy with it. If you don't have access to these sprays, um, watered down acrylic paint will do the same job. Um, you'll get kind of the same effects. If you've got liquid acrylic inks as well you could do that in the same way. 
I'm just going back in, I've got the chicken wire stamp as well, adding some stamping into the background. So that's kind of my finished piece and uh, this is the um, chipboard that I'm going to be using over the top. So again I'm going to be using the sprays but because on craft paper if they, you spray it in it's going to change the colour somewhat. So I want to keep those really bright vibrant colours. So I'm going to um, first gesso all my chipboard pieces. So I've got this large steampunk key pole, then I've got a little bit of lattice, I've got the B with the um, light bulb and then this um, cool steampunk bordery type thing as well, flourish, that I'm going to be using. So I've um, made sure that I've got a good coat of gesso on all of these to make sure that they are going to pick up the colour. Because I had a whole heap of uh, paint left I decided that I would go into my junk journal and try and use it up. These are all scrap effects stencils as well. I just happened to have a whole heap out because I pulled out all my sort of um, steampunky type things at once so I thought I might as well use up as many as I could. So I'm just going in and using up the paint. Um, and this is a good way if you've got a used up journal or a junk journal or something like this if you've got extra paint and you've got stencils out just use it up. It gives you a really great background for something else that you can use and um, somewhere that you can sort of go and play and do some weird and wonderful things later. With the extra paint I had I'm just going in and pre-gessoing another page ready to do something else on so just making sure my area is all used up, all my paint used up before I go on to my next pipe. Again because I'm using those sprays I'm putting down all my papers again and I'm starting off with marine and I'm heat setting it in between and you can see where um, it's lighter where it's sort of sunk in and now on the bottom there you can see what's happening where it's sprayed over somewhere that's already sealed it sort of opens up and pulls and you get really cool effects you can use your heat gun to sort of move it around as well now I know Dina Wakely doesn't suggest using heat guns because obviously acrylics are a type of plastic you're not heating it up for very long obviously the coats of um, acrylic are fairly thin as well so it is you know Go with your gut, <laughs> basically. It, um, know that it's plastic that you're heating up, but again, you're not heating it up for very long. Just to add in some darkness, I sprayed on some night and let it dribble and um, go around my page. And then I've started layering it up. So I've put the lattice in the background and then the light bulb, um, and I'm going in again. This one I decided to keep with more blues just to make it stand out from the background a little bit. And again, sort of dribbling paint around and moving it around till I'm happy with it. So it's just a lot of playing around and adding colours that you like um, to this piece. And working out where you want it. Now this is fairly detailed um, chipboards. And while they're very similar colours over the top, um, it's a piece that you sort of want to go up and look at so it sort of invites you in to look at the different layers so usually when I'm doing something like this I would try and make my layers a little bit more separate so they sort of stand out or make one as a focal image but for this I actually kind of blended them all in together and I'm really glad I did. In actual fact I left the lattice in the background white just to have a little bit of a pop of colour of white on it and to be honest I wish I'd kind of gone back and coloured that now as well just to to add into the background. So I'm just going in and drying off those pieces. Um, you'll notice one of the pages I'm working on is a tissue paper and I found with the, the gloss sprays having um, a, the tissue papers on it colours them up really beautifully and you can use them in other collage bits. Because it's me I wanted to put some neon colours on here too because I was just really loving this mix of colours. It's not something that I would usually do so I wanted to um, just make it really stand out and I decided because I really like the uh, neons in the background that I'd add some over the top of the chipboard pieces as well. The great thing about neon paints is they're translucent so you can still see the colour, you can still see the textures underneath. It just adds a boost of colour to what you're working with um, and it's a really handy trick to sort of trick your, your eye as you're working. So you can see as I'm going around how that sort of 
popping everything out from the background. I did have an idea that I'd use some of this transparency in the background but I decided because it was busy enough already that I would not do that and um, leave it as is. So now I'm just going in with foam tape because I knew because the layers were so similar they did need to have some distance between them. So I'm actually using a double layer of foam tape for each of my little cups um, which gets a little bit fiddly but it's worth it in the end and particularly if you're doing a piece like this um, taking time to make sure that it's sort of mounted all properly is important. You've taken time to make your beautiful pieces so then to put them all together at the end is really important as well. Uh, you can certainly use pre-cut strips um, and now I'm just looking around my studio I've actually found some pre-cut strips that I could have used instead of cutting them up I couldn't find them last night so um, with the lattice I'm trying to work out how to adhere that I decided I was actually just going to glue that straight onto the background so I'm just using the Gina K glue that I use for most of my chipboard pieces I find it sticks everything everywhere so it's a really great mixed media glue I'm pressing that down into background and then pressing the foam stamps over the top and then again I'm going to layer up the light bulb with the two layers of um, foam as well just so it sort of pops out each layer um, evenly. Once I've finished that I'm then going to add the cogs to the bottom as well. So for the cogs I decided that I um, I was originally going to sort of cut them up and use them at, as extra little bits in the background. To just highlight everything and the texture that I've got on this page, I'm also going in with some Inca Gold Wax. And again, this is just like that gold leaf in the background. It just catches your eye. Most of it's covered with paints, but the bits that peek through really catch the light. Because the keyhole had that space down the bottom, I wanted to have something to fill up and to again sort of focus on that um, steampunky type theme. So I'm just gluing that down to the bottom. I'm not using the foam tape for this because again that just gives it a different layer. Putting on some of the um, Inca Gold and I really liked how this is finished but I did need to have some sort of focus on it. So I decided to use these two um, hashtag chipboards which I really love. I use them on a lot of my projects. They're really really fine and detailed but they, um, because they're cut out of such thick chipboard, they're really robust as well. So just use a craft knife or a picker tool to put, pick out all the little things. And I decided I was going to emboss these in black. So I just had a little pop of black onto the page to echo the stamping that I had in the background. And I'm just going to use one coat of black um, and heat it up. So it's just using black um, embossing powder. The reason I like using embossing powder on it is because you do get that shine and texture um, to your page. So I decided I was going to put the words further up but I actually quite like them both together. So again I'm just using the glue to glue this down on the page. So I've got Seek Truth and Work Hard which I thought was um, a really good bonus. I worked well with the, the imagery that I had on the page. Just to finish it off I gave the black just a little um, burnish with gold which in the um, far away you can't really see it but in the close up you can sort of see it really works. So here you can see all the layers of chipboard, all that colour um, and it was just so much fun to do and it's just a reminder and it was a tiny reminder for me too looking at some of the work from the other team members in, in Scrap FX that steampunk doesn't always have to be brown. You can have all sorts of different colours and make it look beautiful and textured and rustic and patinaed um, by using the equipment that you've got on hand. So I hope you have a go at um, trying something like this, this little wall hanging. Please like and subscribe the channel, hit the button above, have a watch of some of the other videos that we've got on our channel. Um, if you are interested in um, finding the blog post for this, um, head to the Scrap FX page. If you're looking at um, buying the chipboard retail, um, head to the chipboardstash.com.au. Thanks for watching.